Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So today I wanted to talk to you all about how I deal with budworms in my garden. So dealing with budworms, at least where I live, is kind of a big deal because if I do not stay on top of it, if I don't stay on top of the budworms, they will eat all of my blooms of my most favorite plants that I have in the garden. I love super tunias, I love super bells, I love geraniums, I love sweet potato vines, and so do the budworms. So the budworms really are my arch nemesis in the garden I have to stay on top of them or my garden is just going to be suffering so the first thing you want to do is you want to identify if you have the same problem that I do if you have budworms if you start noticing that the buds of your flowers are getting little chew marks or little holes in them you might have a problem with budworms the way that I identify budworms and which I think is the first sure sign it's gross to talk about it's nasty but let's all be adults here it's budworm poop if you see little black specks on your flowers along with little chew marks or little holes in the buds that haven't even opened yet then you most likely have budworms especially if you're looking at petunias caliber crow calabracoas, geraniums, nicotiana, just to name a few. So the budworm excrement is probably the first sign and it's when I know I need to take action. And I know having gardened in this garden for a couple years now, I know that it's just something that I have to stay on top of and I have to manage throughout the growing season to keep my garden looking the way I want it to. So the way that I manage budworms, knowing that I have them, is I use something called bee tea, Bacillus thuringiensis if that's how you say it. <laughs> so it is a foliar spray that you use. You can use it about weekly to every 10 days, and it is a naturally occurring soil-borne bacteria that you spray on the leaves of the plants that you wanna protect from budworms. Now, the way that BT works is it has some toxic crystals that the budworms ingest, and budworms have alkaline an alkaline gut, and so the toxic crystal will work on that alkaline gut and will basically kill the budworm from the inside out. Now that same property of working on the alkaline gut is what protects birds, fish, and mammals from BT and makes it virtually harmless to them because they all have an acidic gut. So BT can't work in an acidic gut. It only works in an alkaline gut like that of the budworm caterpillar. Now, some people have brought the use of BT into question since the very tiny, not well-known company called Monsanto started adding it into its genetically modified corn. Uh, the concern was that the insects were building up a resistance to the use of BT and it would soon become unuseful and we'll have these monster insects that we cannot deal with uh, with this use of BT. Now I was looking into this and I was researching it and the interesting thing that I think is really important that we all know is that the type of BT that's been used for generations since the 1950s from, uh, by organic farmers and by homeowners, it's very, very different than the genetically modified BT that's used by Monsanto and their GMO corn. Uh, BT, the toxin is contained in a bacterium. Uh, you know, like I said, it's found in soil. It's a bacteria that's found in soil and the toxic, the toxic crystal that ac is activated by the alkaline environment in the worm, uh, it's contained in a little cell. Now what Monsanto is using is only the toxin. It's not using the cell, it's not using the bacterium, it's only using the toxin, and it is injecting this gene into its genetically modified corn and cotton. So the problem with this is that that toxin is not breaking down in response to sunlight, to heat, and to air like normal BT does. When I use BT or when an organic farmer uses a BT spray, um, it, the BT will break 
break down in a very short amount of time once it hits the air and once it hits sunlight. And by the time that the insect actually ingests the Bt, the Bt is basically gone. Now the problem is what Monsanto is using, the toxin, just the specific toxin, that Bt is not breaking down. It is actually staying in the soil and when farmers are growing this corn or this cotton year after year after year, the insects are developing a resistance to that type of Bt. So the organic practices that we are using and when you use it in a targeted manner, like specifically spraying it on your super tunias, I think that that is responsible organic farming and it's a way that you can still enjoy your flowers without harming the environment. Now, if you somehow get a hold of that genetically modified Monsanto BT, I would say don't use that. Okay, that's it for the scientific research gibberish. I know it's boring, but I think it's really important that all of you understand that. And if I'm gonna do a video about a chemical that you're gonna put on your garden, I want you to understand why I think that that chemical is okay and why I think that it's safe to use. So I did wanna add all that stuff into this video and I hope you all learned something from it. So having said all that, what I do in my garden during the growing season, once I start noticing any signs of budworms, I start spraying BT on a weekly basis. For my garden maintenance schedule, pest control day is on Tuesdays. So Tuesdays are the day that I can pretty much plan that I'm gonna spray BT, and if it's early enough or late enough in the season, I will also use Sluggo to deal with slugs and earwigs. So when I, use B, when I spray BT, I normally use a pump sprayer like this. And the problem with a pump sprayer like this is that I have to pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. I can spray about five of my plants. Then I gotta pump it up again, pump it up again, pump it up again, spray about five more of my plants, and pretty soon I am done. I don't wanna do it anymore. So, I don't know if you all know, but I have this reputation in this neighborhood of being quite the crazy plant lady. And I feel as though I need to keep up with that reputation. And that's why I have this. <laughs> All right, so this was sent to me from Petra Tools. Thank you, Petra Tools, for letting me try this out. When they offered this battery-powered backpack sprayer to me, I jumped on it, you guys. I am so excited to have this. It has completely changed my BT spraying game, and it's keeping up my reputation. So the size that Petra Tools sent me was the HD 3000, which is a three gallon tank for this battery powered backpack sprayer. I am so excited about it. Once you charge it up, the battery will last you up to a week. Why you need to be spraying for a week, I'm not totally sure, but I'm happy to hear that the battery is that good. So it comes with five different nozzles for, you know, depending on the type of spray you want to use. And it has just made the Tuesday BT spray day a breeze for me. I am so excited about it. And I would only tell you guys about this if I absolutely loved it. Now, you do have to be brave enough to walk around with this all day <laughs> or when you're spraying. But I just think that the ease that this backpack sp sprayer being brings me is totally worth it. So I've used all different kinds of BT. I think they're all pretty much the same. The one I'm using right now is this one from Monterey brand, and it's, it's four teaspoons per gallon. For my yard, I made up two gallons of BT, so I just did eight teaspoons into this backpack sprayer. I've already done my backyard, and now I'm going to do my front yard and I'm going to show you guys how I do that. This will be a short video because it takes no time at all with this backpack sprayer, which is fantastic. So when you mix up BT, the thing you have to remember is that it won't last. So if you spray it on a weekly schedule, you only should mix up the amount that you're actually going to use at that time on that day. Don't store it in here. You don't want to do that for the backpack anyway. You want to keep the backpack nice and clean. One thing I did want to say about this backpack, if you guys do end up getting this, you do have to prime it. And what prime it means is that you do have to fill it with about two gallons of water, warm water, and then let it run. And it's going to take 10, 15, possibly 30 minutes of you just letting it run until the water is going to start coming out the hose. Nothing's wrong with the backpack. It's called priming the pump. Once you do that, it's very easy. You just turn on the backpack and you go. All right. So 
All I do is I turn on the backpack sprayer. Hopefully you guys can hear me over the battery and I just start spraying. It is so quick, so fast. This used to take me quite a long time and now I just come right through and it gets everything sprayed very quickly. So don't look at my weeds too closely, but <laughs> all I do is come, I spray it, I get all the foliage wet and with BT you want to spray until you start seeing dripping coming off the leaves. The BT is going to stay on the leaves and if there's any budworms they're going to ingest that BT and then they're going to get poisoned from the inside out. It's sad but I want them to die. <laughs> <laughs> And that is it. I am all done. That took about, what, three minutes? Would you say that, Jason? Maybe three minutes. Maybe three minutes. Yeah. I mean, you guys, this is awesome. I'm super excited about it. And I think it looks pretty cool, too. <laughs> so thank you to Petra Tools for sending this out. I will link this in the description down below if you guys are interested. They do have smaller versions, and they do even have bigger versions. And I think they also have a cart version if you don't want to be like me and wear it on your back <laughs> like the crazy plant lady I am. So again, thank you to Petra Tools for sending this out. More importantly, I hope you all learned something about managing budworms in your garden and the use of BT. I was really interested to learn everything that I did about the genetically modified version versus the organic version that we can get, and it made me feel a lot better about using this organic product on my flowers in my garden. Um, I think it has just made a huge difference in the bloom rate of my flowers, how my garden looks, and honestly, I don't know if I would plant petunias if it weren't for using BT on a regular basis, at least where I live. So I hope you all learned something. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll try and answer them as best I can. I also want to say I will leave my references in the in the description down below so you guys can read further about the stuff I was talking about about the use of BT. So I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, please consider subscribing and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.